Okay, we're back with part two, discussing how to create chart annotations and utility flags in the Digitrack LWD software. If you've already watched part one, you remember that we left off just before getting to this icon right here. This is the utility flags icon. I'm going to go ahead and click this. And this brings up our utility flags dialog box. As you can see, we have fields for distance, depth, type, comment, and text slope, which is at the default of zero. But I like to enter utility flags from the chart since it makes filling in the distance and depth values much easier. So I'm going to close this and show you how to do that now. I want to enter some electrical information in my chart. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the shift button on my keyboard and go to approximately three feet. I can fill in the exact depth in just a moment. I'm going to hold down the shift button and now left click to bring up my utility flag dialog box again. We know the depth is three feet. So I'm going to go ahead and change the depth field to exactly three feet. I know I want to add a power line, so I'm going to go ahead and change the type to electrical and put a comment in with something descriptive. Okay, this text slope is at a minus 30, and I'll show you what that looks like after I add this utility flag. Remember, anytime you add, change, or delete anything in an LWD dialog box that has these buttons, you must also click OK to save your changes. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And as we can see, the 240 volt power line has been added at exactly three feet with the text slope at 30 degrees. And that's what it looks like when you change the slope. That's your 30 degree text slope right there. Next, I'm going to add a gas line. I'm going to go a little further down our chart here and add a gas line at approximately five feet. So I'm going to go ahead again and hold down the shift button, left click, and bring up our utility flag dialog box again. I'm going to change the depth to five feet, change my type to gas and oil, and enter my comment indicating this is a two inch high pressure gas line. Okay, I'm going to put this text slope at a zero. I'm going to add it to our list. And now I'm going to click OK to save. As you can see, this utility flag has been entered with the comment, distance, depth, and relative elevation fields, which are all viewable by hovering over the gas line. And as you can see, the text slope is straight across at a zero slope. There are eight different utility flag types that you can choose from when you're creating a utility flag. Next, we're going to talk about drill data log locate annotations. So just to the right of the utility flag, we can click this and bring up our drill data log locate annotations dialog box. Similar to the utility flags, I like to enter this box with a keyboard shortcut that allows us to draw in our annotation. So I'm going to close this and we'll come right back to it. Say I want to add a stream in my profile chart. The easiest way to do that is to mouse over to the beginning location where you want 
to start drawing this object. This is my desired start point. I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift button, hold the left mouse click, and start drawing my stream. That's going to fill up the gap in my chart. After I have it drawn approximately how I want it, I release. This can all be edited. As you see, the coordinates have already been pre-populated based on how I just drew this in. They can be fine-tuned from there, or you can delete the object. You can simply remove it and redraw it if you need. So, we have our coordinates, and underneath we have our choice of shapes. I want to use a basin. We have our choice between a rectangle, an ellipse, or a basin. I want to use the basin shape. You can change the darkness of the text and the height with the line font settings if desired, but I think the default should be fine. You can then go into the draw shape field and draw an outline, a back, or a caption. I know that I want to color in my basin, so I'm going to click the draw back button, and to the right of that, this oval is actually a color palette. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, bring up the palette, and select a blue to represent that stream. I'm going to click OK on the color palette, and now I'm ready to draw a caption. So I'm going to draw a caption with a comment that this is a stream, and see that I can also orientate my caption with different coordinates, but I'm going to leave it at the default of zero. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my stream and click OK. And as you can see, a stream has been drawn in, which started at my desired start and ended at my endpoint. I'm going to click this stream object, which brings up the annotations dialog box again. Because if you have any comments that you want to add to this annotation to get saved in the printed report, which I'll show you in just a moment, you can also add them into the general comments section at the top of the annotations dialog box. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this now. And to the right of our annotations dialog box, we see three other annotation box, uh, buttons, which are grayed out right now because those are for use with the pressure tension documents. And if you had a pressure tension document opened for a fluid pressure job or a tensor track job, those options would be available to you. The next option that we have available allows us to edit the profile chart properties. I'm going to click that and we see it opened up the Profile Chart Extents and Mode dialog box. By default, this is set to auto scale to fit on a piece of paper or uh, on the printed report during print preview uh, or a PDF file. This can be edited and allows the user to manually set the range of coordinates. Uh, the, so the software automatically adds a buffer area um, so you may want to experiment by unchecking auto scale and changing these values if, if you want. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. The three buttons to the right, which are grayed out, again, are for pressure tension documents. Moving on, you have a print setup button, which is a standard Windows interface that allows you to change the name of your printer and where you print to, in addition to paper size and source, and your orientation, whether it's portrait or landscape. I'm going to cancel out of that. And this next button is very useful in LWD, because if you've made any changes, you probably want to take a look at them before you print or before you create a PDF report to send to your customer. 
So clicking print preview, and now zooming in, we're now at the drilled data log printed report. We're previewing this before we do anything else with it. And as you can see, the information that I pointed out in the site information dialog box that I purposely left blank is present at the very top of our drill report. If I had edited, added or edited any of that information, it would have appear here. So going through this report, the next page shows our profile chart with the utility markers that I placed and the stream that I drew in. It calls out the utility markers and gives the information on the annotation in addition to the caption. I'm going to zoom back in again. You can zoom in and zoom out with these buttons. You can go next page or previous page with these buttons. And you can also print from the print preview. Going to the next page, you see a complete listing of all the rods from our job. OK, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now that you understand how useful the print preview screen is. And next is the print document button. And again, this is a standard Windows print button, which allows you to select your print range, number of copies, and where you print to. To the right of that is our help topic shortcut. This can also be accessed from the help menu item. First thing I'm going to show you is contextual help. It's this arrow with a question mark. If I click on that, my mouse icon now displays a question mark to the right of it. If I click on anything in the active data log chart, it will bring up the relevant help topic for the item you just clicked on. This is contextual help. And it can be a quick way to navigate around our help files and get the help you need with a specific section of your data chart. So I'm going to click this and just open up the main help. By clicking the yellow question mark, the first page that you get to is the how to section and the Digitrack LWD help index. These how to topics are a great place to start with all things related to LWD. They can answer questions in a pinch just simply by clicking on the help button. We spent a lot of time making these very usable and very informative. And any information that you can't find in the LWD help file, you can find in the LWD manual, which is shipped out with every LWD kit sent with the F5 receiver. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And this concludes part two. That's all for now. Please check back with us for more videos on how to get the most out of Digitrack LWD.